No, that's a good one. <laughs> you actually think Shane is... Well, you and Rex are the same age. I know that. And Shane looks to be about nine years old, which means you would have been really young when you had him. About the same age you were when you were dating Rex. Rex was long gone from Michigan by the time I got pregnant. Rex's aunt Corinne said you left town right after he did. I did, and I met someone else. Guess I was on the rebound. The rest, as they say, is history. My history. Rex doesn't keep things from me, you know. He told me all about running into you in Texas, and now suddenly you're here. Funny. Rex didn't mention that his fiance was a detective, too. I'm not. Oh, could have fooled me, because you're pretty good with the third degree. Well, I'm just trying to understand why Rex would have left out the fact that you have a son. Well, that would be simple. Rex doesn't know. So, Adriana and I were over at Dorian's house, and we met this guy who says his name is Charlie Balsam. Wait a minute, where? Is this the same Charlie Balsam that saved you from Manning? Yeah. Adriana said that he was no relation. Well, because that's what he said when we first met him. But then I started putting the heat on Roxy about Wally, and she told me that he isn't my real father. And your real father is... This guy, Charlie Balsam. Okay, does he know that? Uh, he has no idea, according to Roxy. She goes into this rant uh, about how Wally and Charlie were cousins. Uh, so Charlie came over one night, uh, they, got, they got drunk, they got together, and... and Ta-da! As if my self-esteem isn't through the roof enough, now I have to find out that I'm the product of, of two total strangers bonding over a bottle of bourbon. A little depressing. Mm. Did you talk to Charlie about Roxy? Oh, she begged me not to. She was afraid her reputation would be ruined. What's left of it? And if I can't talk to the guy... What about a DNA test? <sighs> well, you can't do a test without Charlie. Right? And what if Roxy's making it up? Or, or, or what if, what if he, he has no idea, he doesn't want anything to do with me? Where does that leave me? You know, Balsam, you have turned your life around in the past five years. Now you're engaged to this terrific girl. The two of you are very happy. If you find out who your real father is now, that's not going to change anything. Change things for Matthew. What made you think I've been drinking again? Well, you dropped off the face of the earth. You never returned my calls, and now you're living with Dorian? You know, that alone is self-destructive. No. Look, Vicky, you were there with me when I took my last drink, and I never would have made it through that without you. Okay, uh, you know, there's this awful thought that is going through my mind right now. What? Oh, no, no. Oh, there's nothing like that going on here. No, Dorian and I are just friends. You're friends with Dorian? Hmm. Where did you even meet her? Did you meet her at most, Ina? Uh, no, no, it wasn't there. Does she know that you and I know each other? Well, she didn't know until she saw the picture, that, that picture of you and I at the Bonjour. You still have that? Well, of course I do. I've got it right in my folder. I'm looking at it all the time. Anyway, it wasn't until uh, after the hostage thing that she finally admitted to me that she knew you. After? Hmm. Yeah, because, you see, she was kind of surprised to see you in a uh, waitress uniform and everything, and I had told her that you and I had not told each other our last names, and I think it was sort of out of uh, maybe a respect for your privacy that she didn't feel it was right for her to mention about your life here in Landview. And then she just invited you to live with her? Well, oh, yeah. She wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't take no for an answer, no. Yeah. She said she got, you know, a lot of empty rooms here, and you know, she didn't want me to waste money on a hotel. So. I see. So I, I'm assuming she's filled you in on our relationship. Oh, yeah. She told me about how you're her oldest and dearest friend. Me falling for Charlie? No. <laughs> We're just friends. That's all there is to He's a lying drunk. You know that, right? And he screwed over everyone in his life. You won't be an exception. The love of my life was a recovering alcoholic named Mel Hayes. So I know what I'm talking about. 
I can understand why you're angry and bitter because of the kind of father that Charlie was, but he is a different man today. I'm telling you, I haven't seen him touch alcohol the entire time I've known him. I know my father, okay? The man who was my father. And he's not worth your time. And he's definitely not worth my time. You punk! What did you call me? I called you a punk. Because that's exactly what you are. You are a first-time novice con man trying to pull off this huge scheme. How many people are on to you, punk? There's Pamela, there's me, there's Charlie. Who else? I'm telling you, sooner or later, you're going to fall. Because you're going to make that happen. Because you are not as good as you think you are. But for some reason, despite the kind of man you have become, Charlie is desperate to make amends with you. And I intend to see that he is not denied that opportunity. If I see him, you keep your mouth shut. Absolutely. In fact, I'm rooting for you. Shall we? Shall we what? Your father is at my house right now. <sighs> I think your coming over to see him would be such a pleasant surprise. I know I'm going to regret this. Not as much as the alternative. There must be something in this for you. Someday, perhaps I'll ask you to return the favor. What do you want? Okay, I'll write you a check when I leave here. What? I'll bribe one of the nuns to throw the bingo game my way. Okay, then what do you want? My freedom. Your freedom. Mm -hmm. This secret is going to knock your socks off, Jessica. And if you want to know what it is, get me out of here.